Um, today I wanted to introduce you to a new series that I'll hopefully be continuing on a weekly basis if, uh, if the news allows it. It's called Coffee in Kilowatts. It's going to give me an opportunity to talk about, you know, the, the topics, not just road trips and Bolt TV stuff, but, you know, go a bit wider. <laughs> So, although it's been gloomy and grey here the last uh, few days in terms of weather, we are starting to see some sunshine and uh, the buds of spring. Um, so I thought, good time to bring out some good news, you know, in all this mess. Uh, it's good to remind ourselves that there is another side to this. There's going to be, you know, as one of my friends said, there's going to be some great parties on the other side. Um, I view it as great road trips, you know, we're going to have some outstanding time to get out there when the summer months roll around. A new series that I'll hopefully be continuing on a weekly basis called Coffee in Kilowatts. It's going to give me an opportunity to talk about, you know, the, the topics, not just road trips and Bolt TV stuff, but, you know, go a bit wider, um, keep a weekly flow of videos coming through. It's just, you know, things that have caught my eye and especially at the moment, some good news in uh, a world that's pretty difficult to find good news. So. We'll, uh, we'll dive in and see what we've got today. So coffee in kilowatts. I have neglected to actually bring any coffee in this case, but I do have uh, a little bit of cold brew left, so we can sip that. And uh, join into the first uh, news stories that I caught this last week, uh, which is Polestar 2, a uh, very promising electric vehicle from the uh, all-electric sub-brand of Volvo has uh, started production in China. So despite the, you know, the grim kind of uh, proclamations of we're not going to be able to make the EV transition as quickly now, and there are delays, obviously, and the Polestar 2, which is a very promising car, um, has gone into production in China as planned. So that shows that obviously the origin of uh, all this mess is kind of, you know, beginning to get back to normal. But the Polestar 2 is a 70 kilowatt hour battery pack, um, looking at around 290, 290, five miles of range by the sounds of it um, and that's also one of these uh, first models that's going to have Android Auto baked right into the car so I know a lot of people like Android Auto Apple CarPlay as well potentially uh, you know a co good competitor to the Tesla Model 3 which is going great guns right now you know seventh best selling car in the USA 19th best selling car in the world um, so yeah fingers crossed that they keep to production uh, schedules and the Polestar 2 is uh, on schedule to come out, you know, as a good uh, competitor to Tesla. So again, more positives from Tesla. The good news just keeps on coming for them. Um, obviously, they've had to shut down production as well in the USA, so that's uh, going to take a hit maybe in Q2. But as far as Q1 goes, um, they delivered 88,400 vehicles. They don't break it down by type or uh, out that's just global but uh, you know this is great news for them the model wires started to be delivered that's not going to have made a massive dent on the q1 figures but it is it, from all you know accounts so far an outstanding vehicle it's been delivered earlier um, it's in a key segment you know these things are gonna go for that one once we get through the other side and you know the it's it's hard to know how that's going to affect uh, people's purchase decisions for vehicles but tesla seems to be you know, able to weather some of that storm through the brand loyalty and the, the demographic that they market to. So, you know, as far as record Q1, uh, there's no federal incentives in the US anymore for them. So that's all delivered on the basis of the brand and the uh, product that they're selling. And as much as, you know, I, I may moan a lot about people going, uh, you know, just all in on Tesla and never, never, you know, looking at the other options. I, you know, I'm not living in cloud cuckoo land. I know full well and appreciate what Tesla has done for this uh, market and how it's brought, you know, the challenge to all these other uh, legacy automakers to step up and whether they get there or not, that's still up in the air, but they have plans and are starting to announce, you know, electrification of fleets. And that's all because of Tesla. So very good news for them in Q1. And I just hold my hands up and say, great job. You know, it's, I'm a Tesla fan. I'm not a Tesla fan boy. I just like the fact that, you know, they can continue to lead. 
and uh, have the other automakers really have to you know chase them i don't want anyone to go bust i just want these companies to really start stepping up their game to to get on somewhere close to tesla even So third, another piece of positive news that just rolled out in the last day and especially relevant for me having uh, done the fully charged videos recently and getting down to Austin uh, fully charged 2021. Uh, we'll be in Austin, Texas as well. A bit later this time, it'll be uh, April 3rd and 4th next year. But uh, it sounds like they're going to a bigger venue somewhere called the Palmer Events Center, which I need to look at a map. I'll overlay it on the screen here. But uh, from the sounds of it, that's uh, downtown Austin, Texas. A bigger venue, have give them a bit more scale. And from talking to uh, Chris at Fully Charged, at the event, it sounds like, you know, they have a good base of partners now. So they have uh, people that they know and trust can help them on the ground. Uh, you'll also want to check out the uh, video from Chelsea Sexton, who towed the EV1 down to uh, Austin from Oklahoma in a uh, Audi e-tron. So some interesting efficiency numbers there. But no, again, the fact that uh, Electrify America makes that possible, you can tow these things. There's a, you know, a very solid, competent vehicle in the e-tron, not particularly my cup of tea just uh you know having test driven it and seeing some of the um the kind of weight of it, it just doesn't quite feel as nippy as a bolt tv or some of the the smaller cars and you know obviously doesn't have that initial wow factor of the tesla um but you know it's it, it's obviously a solid very well built german engineered car and it has uh you know the capability to tow something that iconic down to uh to austin you know, that was a really good video. So anyway, you know, fully charged 2021. You can get early bird tickets now or hold on a bit longer, but it did sell out this year. So it's something to, you know, make a long-term road trip. And if anyone wants to go down from the Northeast, well, you know, I'm looking at it. So let me know. Maybe we uh, convoy, road trip, whatever. Let's think about it. And fittingly for this channel, uh, back to GM for the final um, piece of news, which uh, a couple of, a bit of a twofer really. Um, obviously the not so good news was uh, the, the del delay of the mid-cycle refresh for the Bolt EV. The 2021 was uh, due to be refreshed. It looks like now maybe they'll stick with the uh, kind of 2020 improvements and then they'll have to reschedule production for the mid-cycle refresh to the 2022 model. But that sh should still be out next year and hopefully that aligns with things like the Bolt EUV and some of the models that GM has planned. But they've also announced this week that they have, uh, GM has teamed up with Honda to build two electric vehicles or develop two electric vehicles in Ohio. That will be down in Lordstown. You talk about positive economic news. Um, they already had, before all this happened, the uh, 2.3 billion going into Lordstown for the uh, battery collaboration with LG Chem there, which is going to be crucial to all their you know, zero emissions, zero congestion uh, vision for 2025. Um, so there's already that 2.3 billion going into Lordstown. And then you have uh, Lordstown Motors, obviously, coming out of the uh, factory where they used to build the cruise. That's another automotive um, company, you know, going all in on electric. Those are going to be all electric trucks. So hopefully they make a success of that. You know, Honda's not been quite so gung-ho, but teaming up with GM, you know, there's two electric vehicles supposed to be coming uh, to Lordstown. I think we're going to see a lot more of this legacy automakers collaborating, trying to figure out where they can, uh, you know, make uh, good partnerships with people who have production in different markets where they aren't necessarily as big. Honda has the Honda E, which is, you know, getting a lot of rave reviews uh, over in Europe right now. And uh, the, the styling of that is very popular, but that's not going to make it into the US market. You know, it's too small, uh, kind of like the VW ID3. Whatever Honda comes up with with GM is likely to be a larger car, longer range, bigger mileage, that kind of thing. But uh, it's all good news. You know, if you don't have to love GM, you don't have to love Honda. You can just say, you know, the, these manufacturers are starting to realize that they need to work together and they're up against the clock. The electric vehicle podcasts and news programs that i'm listening to generally have more and more kind of positive stories and it's a nice uh nice distraction from the the less you know pleasant news that's coming in every day so i hope you and your family are well i hope everybody is you know able to stay at home and do what they need to do to uh 
to kind of make this an easier transition for everybody. Um, thank you to any essential workers, you know, healthcare workers, people who are out there, you know, delivering the services that everybody needs whilst we're stuck at home. So we appreciate you, we applaud you, and uh, I hope this gives at least just a little bit of, um, you know, relief or whatever you can take from it uh, against the backdrop of everything that's happening. So be well, stay safe, and uh, we look forward to a hell of a road trip on the other side of all this. Thanks a lot.